What's up, gang? Welcome to another episode of 16 Steps. This week, we're going to be going over the effects section of the Roland MC909. Here we go. All right, so we are back with the Roland MC909. Before we get started, why don't you guys go down there and click the subscribe button. Give me some likes if you find this stuff useful. And today, we are talking about the effects section. Um, so you'll notice here that there is compressor, MFX1, MFX2, Reverb. These are the, these are the main effects that we're going to be talking about today. Um, if you want to quickly get to any of those, you can hit shift and then hit the button. Um, and then today what we're going to be doing is, uh, I'm just going to kind of show you how the effects work and give you a quick overview of all of the different types of effects. So if you're looking at the, the page here on the pattern page, you'll see there's mixer, there's effects. Um, you can go to mixer and you'll see here that reverb level is one of your options. So this is the reverb send. So the reverb is a send. These are all series, meaning one goes after the other. Um, but uh, so we're going to start off with no reverb sent on that channel. And let's get out of here and let's see what our what kind of patch we have. Let's go ahead and find a different patch. I'm going to go for category. I'm going to go synth. Let's see. Saw stack. That's okay. DOC. There, that's, that sounds good. So um, if you are on your patch, place, patch play page, you can go ahead and hit effects and this will bring up this screen which gives you like all of the uh, the different areas that we'll be looking at today. There's routing, compressor EQ, MFX 1, 2, and reverb. So you see these four are there. The knob assign is not there. So um, we'll look at routing and basically what this is, is it shows you the part. And so it says you have part one selected. So if you notice, I'll select different parts and it will have different numbers in that spot. And underneath that is the dry, which means that it is just going to the mix, which is left, right. And one important thing to remember is that the effects only come out of uh, left and right. They don't come out of the individual outs. So if you are planning on using this with uh, multiple outputs, that's something to keep in mind. Um, but uh, all of your effects can come out of the, the mix left, right. So right now we're set to dry. You can say MFX1, which is this block here. And then if you scroll over, you can see that when you scroll those, you can see that uh, there are little abbreviated descriptions of those effects. And if you hit enter here, you'll get the list of effects. Um, and then over here on the side, this is the reverb send. You can see the little line goes down and ends up in the reverb. Um, this box indicates the output of MFX1. So right now it's going to the dry, or you can have it go to MFX2. Um, and the other thing is that you can uh, route the part to MFX2 or you can put it straight into that compressor, or you can have the direct outs one and two, which are labeled there for you. Um, today, we're gonna to be going into MFX one. Uh, you'll see here on MFX two, there's also a reverb send. There's a reverb send on part on the part one, and there's a reverb send on the compressor. So if you'll notice here, I'll go ahead and turn this up, and then when we look at our patch play page, that reverb is all the way up. And you can see also that we are going out. Uh, the out destination is set to MFX1. So if we switch this back to dry and then go back to that effects routing page, what you have selected here will be reflected on that page. So let's go back to routing and you'll see it's set on MFX1 and our reverb is at zero. So the easy way to get uh, 
into these once again is just to hit shift and then press the key. If you have your cursor up at the top, you can select, um, you can scroll through this way and find them. This knob is always, this type knob is always um, the type of, re of effect that you want. And then um, if you hit enter, you get the list. So if you have the list, you can use that to scroll around. You can up and down. You can increment, decrement. You can scroll wheel, however you want to get around in there. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of what they are. But the first, what is this? Four, so through is just blank. Um, and then there's uh, th these first five are kind of EQ effects. And then... Uh, and uh, I guess like more precise EQs. Um, then there's uh, some filter effects. There's super filter, step filter. Um, these are cool. The step filter allows you to do stuff like um, get crazy precise uh, stepping filter patterns. And then this is for the 9 through 16 or 1 through 8. And then this is just a filter. And you can even select a different type of filter. Very cool. And then these knobs, you'll see that there's C1 and C2. And you'll see that those are reflected there. So there's your resonance on two. And then there's the attack on one. Cool. So, a lot of a uh, lot of the conventions are gonna go uh, transfer between the the different effects. So, like a lot of the step ones, will you'll be able to use the the sliders. Um, there's one for slice that actually just slices the audio like that, which is cool. Um, continuing on these filter effects, there's a humanizer, uh, wah pedal, then um, the humanizer also gives you like some uh, vowel sounds. So yeah, makes crazy stuff. Um, then there's phaser, good phasers on here. Um, ring modulator, uh, tremolo, auto pan is super useful. Um, there's a couple of really great choruses on here. This uh, The stereo chorus is good. Space dimension chorus is good. Um, the, the flanger stuff is, it's all tight. Um, this overdrive and distortion stuff is okay. Uh, it's not uh, it's not crazy good or anything like that, but you can you can definitely dirty some stuff up. And then there's also amp simulator, and you can get a lot of uh, a lot of parameters on the on the amp simulator. Um, sounds just like an amp, right? Um, let's go back there. Effects. We're on MFX one. Uh, there's an additional compressor here. So there's a this compressor, which you can have on MFX 1 and 2. There's this compressor, and then there's another compressor there. So there's compressors all over this thing. Limiter, slicer is cool. Because that actually just like... Allows you to get like little rhythms. Get back to this. 
Uh, gate is uh, just like kind of like a, a noise gate. When it gets to the level, it opens the gate. When it drops below the level, the gate closes. There's some lo-fi sounds here to dirty up sounds, which are pretty useful. And it's cool that they give you these, the two knobs to mess with without selecting it. So you can kind of futz around with it and see. Telephone. Phonograph for that vinyl sound. Okay. Tape echo, this is the only delay that's on MFX1. Uh, MFX2 um, gives you the same 38 effects, plus uh, I believe it gives you nine more types of effects, uh, which are all delays. So let's see. Let's go ahead and we're going to put MFX1 to through. And then we're going to have the output of that one go to MFX2. And then we'll take a look at some of these delays on here. They're all at the end. And this is stereo delay. And you can see that you can dial in stuff. Um, and you have your feedback and your balance, all of the good stuff. And it's, uh, it's important to remember that these can be tempo synced. And, you know, if you are just using the MC909 as like an effects for whatever reason, um, it's, it's pretty capable. Like you can just use this as an effects unit, uh, tap your tempos or sync it MIDI. Um, and it's pretty cool. There are like good delays, the choruses, the reverbs are tight. Um, so maybe you'll find a use for that. It's just another kind of weird um, way that you can use this machine that maybe it wasn't really intended intended to be used as. Um, so uh, you'll see here um, on all of the effects, at the top of all of the effects, you get um, reverb send and then the output assigned. So whichever one you pick, the ones at the top are always going to be reverb send or output assigned. Um, the output assign isn't lit because we are on MFX2 and your only option for the output of MFX2 is the left right. Um, if you're on MFX1, you'll see then you have options. Um, but I guess, you know, save space, use the same screen kind of stuff, whatever. So, oh, there's some JMJ phasing going on. And then, uh, what you can do here is um, you can send reverb after MFX2. So if you think about it, you could have reverb on the dry and then have an effect on the first one and have that send into the reverb. And then you could have a third effect or a second effect on MFX2 and send that to the reverb as well. But this will just be um, from the synth sound into the phaser and then into the reverb. Very cool. Um, and then let's look at the reverb. Let's take this all the way off. Let's turn off. You can also turn off the effects just by hitting the knobs, the, the switches for it. The important thing to remember is that um, it saves whatever effects you have programmed per pattern. So if you save your pattern with effects, it will save it. But it won't save the on-off state of these switches which can be a bummer. So just in case, you always have those to switch it off or switch it on. Um, right now we're gonna switch off MFX1 and 2, and we're just gonna go for reverb. So this is our bass sound. Um, there's the reverb. And you can see here, you get a level and the time. Um, but the important thing is, is that the reverb is a send effect, which means you have to send an amount to it. So you can do that from the routing page, and that would be 
that right there. So that you could send to reverb from there. And again, there's your patch play page, and then there's the reverb send there. I usually use the this page for most of the most of my routing stuff. Very rarely am I looking at that uh, the routing page. Once you realize that you can kind of you can figure out where you need it to go just by uh, messing with this out. There's not a whole lot of need to go to that routing page unless you need to edit something. Um, but let's see. Let's go back to reverb. And you'll see here, this is the basic reverb, and you get a, you get a selection on this one uh, reverb algorithm. There's some room, stage, hall, and then some delay type reverbs. I imagine that these work really well if they're like small. Like in a mix, I'm sure that might just do something to add a little space. Just give things some motion. Uh, so this is the bass reverb algorithm. Then there's also the SRV algorithms. So for the SRV, you get a choice of room, hall, plate, and each of these has a bunch of different parameters that you can mess with. So you can mess with the time, the size, and then you have EQ options, uh, diffusion and density, things like that, more complicated reverbs. Um, and I think that I like the sound of the, of these, of the SRV um, reverbs, particularly the hall. Oh, the worst, okay. Particularly the hall. Let's turn some. Get some nice like bloom kind of reverb happening. That's not too bad. Um, next up we're going to look at the compressor. So I'm going to go ahead and um, exit this. I'm going to put the main out to compressor. Or not the main out, but the out for our um, dual oscillator stack here. Um, and then, so that's going to our compressor. I imagine this works best on like a drum kit, but uh, I'm not going to go through and make a drum kit right now, but I will go ahead and look at this compressor real quick because you can see here that this is just a very basic compressor. I don't know that it's uh, particularly modeled after any specific type of compressor like VCA or um, or optical or anything like that. I just uh, it's a I think it's a it's a tool. It's um, it's just uh, there to to help if you need it. But I would not rely heavily on this as my main compressor. The EQ though, you get like basically a low and a high. And you can use this to kind of correct some stuff, I'm guessing. So there's like a low frequency that you dial in, and then there's a high frequency. And there's a level. So this becomes your, since, since it's, a, it's a serial EQ, Same with the compressor. Um, and so our compressor, let's see, let's, how can we do this? So like I was saying, this will sound better on like a drum kit. You'll be able to hear more differences. Okay. Um, 
Okay, let's mute these. So there is a, uh, I have, this should just be the kick drum. Um, let's go ahead and put those on the compressor. So you can hear that compressor now. And what I want to do is make the attack. A lot of gain on there. No high ratio. You can do so that lets all of that uh, transient in. So there's some options. Um, again, I would not rely on this compressor EQ, but if you have time to fiddle with this stuff and make it go, then that would be awesome. Let me know uh, what you use for good results on those. There's also the mastering e compressor here. Um, again, this is like, uh, check this out. I'm gonna turn off all of these. So that's just the basic. And then what we'll do is go to mastering and you'll see we have a multi-brand compressor. There are also uh, some presets. Again, um, I don't have a whole lot of experience using this, so I'm not going to talk about it a whole bunch, but it is there, and if you do have uh, some experience with those things and know some tricks about it, um, go ahead, hit me up in the comments, let me know. Um, that pretty much covers it for the effects. Um, catch me next week, I'm going to go over things like sequencer, my favorite thing, and then also these little features down here. So uh, I'll see you right on the other side of this. All right, so that is pretty much it for the effects section. Uh, I hope you found these useful. And give me some likes if you like this stuff. Hit subscribe, I really appreciate it. And until next time, peace.